after five months, Affinity Photo has just released its latest update, version 1.8. Most of the changes in 1.8 are pretty subtle, lots of bug fixes and minor improvements. But there is one change that's very significant. With a 1.8 update, the new document window has been completely overhauled. In this video, I'll teach you everything you need to know about the new document window, and if you stick around until the end, I have a gift for you that I think you're really going to like. To open the new document window, you can go to File, New, or you can press the shortcut key, Command or Control N. It looks like there is a lot going on when you open this window, but don't worry, I'll break it down nice and simple for you. At the top, we can choose which preset category we want to use. There's categories for architects, devices like iPads and phones, placing your design on the web, printing your photo at somewhere like Costco or Walmart, printing your design with a commercial printing company, or printing your design on a home printer. There's also a category for any custom presets that you create. After choosing which category best fits your purposes, you can click on a specific preset inside of the category. As you do so, the settings on the right side will automatically update. Some of these settings are a little technical, but that's okay. If you choose the correct preset for your situation, these settings will already be good to go. All you need to do is tweak any of them that don't perfectly fit your situation. For example, you might want to change the document units to something you're more familiar with, or give your document a transparent background. When you have your settings the way you want them, you can press Create to start your new document. I'm going to reopen the new document window though, because I have a few more things to show you. First, I want to show you how you can make your own presets. Let's say I want to make a preset that's the size of my MacBook Pro for designs that I will place on the web. The first thing I would do is find an existing preset that's the closest thing to what I want. Inside the web category, there's WQHD, which is pretty close to what I want. The only thing I need to change is the height, since my MacBook Pro has a height of 1600 pixels. Now, to turn this into a preset, all we need to do is press on this plus button. Now we've created our first preset. If you want to rename or delete it, all you need to do is right click on it. As a bonus tip for you, you can also use the My Presets category as a Favorites category. For example, if you make a lot of business cards and you're always going to print ready and then searching for business card, you could turn the business card preset into one of your own presets. That way it will be easier to find. For the final part of this video, I want to show you my favorite part of the 1.8 update and that's the ability to use templates. Unlike presets, which just set the size and color profile of your new document, templates allow you to have layers pre-built into your document. For example, if I start a new document with my fancy card template, you'll see that my new document already has all of these layers built right into it. By opening this template, I'm already halfway done with my work.
And best of all, these templates are universal across all the Affinity apps. That means you can make a template while working in Affinity Photo, Designer, or Publisher, and then open that template in any of the other Affinity apps. Let me show you how you can make your own templates. First, make any changes to the document that you want. Then, you can save it as a template file by coming to File, Export as Template. Then, choose a name and location for it to be saved to. Next, you'll need to create a folder to put your template inside of. You should place this folder in a safe spot on your computer a place where you don't need to move it. Then, place the template file inside of the folder. Back in Affinity, you'll go to the Template section of the New Document window. From here, you can press Add Folder, and then choose the templates folder that you created. And just like that, you've added your first template. If you ever want to add more templates, just follow the same steps to create a template, and then add your new template to the templates folder that you already created. After that, your new template should automatically appear in Affinity Photo, but sometimes I've needed to restart the app before my template will appear in the new document window. Now, to finish this video, I want to share my gift with you. To celebrate the addition of templates to Affinity Photo, I've left a download link in the video description for all of my personal templates. Just download the folder I made, and then import that folder in the new document window. You can use all of these templates for free for any project you're working on. I want to quickly show you how they work though, so that you can make the most of them. If I open the iMac template, you can see that I've already masked out the iMac screen. All you need to do is place your own photo into this document. You can do that by going to File, Place, then click and drag to choose how big you want your photo to be. Then, place the Photos layer at the bottom of the Layers panel. I've also included a few extra layers that you can turn on and off. You can even lower their opacities if you think they're too strong. I'll show you how one more of the templates works because you'll also need to know how to work with embedded documents. Let's try out the iPad template. Inside the Layers panel, you'll see a layer called Your Photo. Select this layer, and then double-click on the layer's icon to open the embedded document. From here, you can place whatever photo you want to use. Then, if we come back to our iPad template, you can see that the photo has been beautifully placed onto the iPad screen. Isn't that amazing? And if your positioning isn't quite correct, you can move the photo inside the embedded document, and it will automatically update inside the iPad document. And because the photo document is embedded, all you need to do is save the iPad document, and the embedded document will automatically be saved with it. Well, that concludes our 1.8 tutorial. Thanks for watching, my friends, and I hope you enjoy your free templates.